let me tell you, you think you can rent a bulldozer or a loader or an excavator and do it cheaper than you can hire it. And I'm telling you right now, you cannot do it cheaper. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another gorgeous day out here in Brown Town. <laughs> Everything's brown. It's winter time here on the Stony Ridge Farm and today's video is going to be brought to you in part by a suggestion from a viewer just like yourself. So if you've never been here to the farm, this is a first generation farm here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. It's a regenerative farm, meaning we're farming without chemicals as best we possibly can. We're bringing carbon to the land, not fertilizer to the land, and we're trying to think of our soil as a living organism. So come along today as we talk to you guys about start to finish. This is basically going to be about eight years in 15 minutes. We're going to describe everything that I've done so far here on the farm to build this cattle operation. Again, this is a first generation farm and you can do it. All right guys, welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. This is your first time, your 50 million time. Please hit that like button. We're gonna get right into this. So about nine years ago, eight or nine years ago, I started looking for land. I found a 60 acre parcel of land here and we're in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina and I found it for $2,000 an acre. It did not look like this. There were no fences. There were hardly any fields. Of the entire 60 acres, there was probably six acres of usable field. And I say usable, not usable for grazing, just open land. All the rest of the 60 acres was covered in trees. Then about a year later, the land across the way came up for sale. So another 90 acres came up for sale. Then another 50 acres came up for sale. So you get only one opportunity most of the time in your life to buy parcels of land that are attached to the parcel that you have. So it's important that you pay attention to that and utilize that opportunity. And that's what we did. So we bought 60 acres here that I'm standing on. We bought 90 acres across the way and it was overgrown and brush and briars and blackberries. It just looked horrible. And we bought that for around $1,700 an acre. Then we bought an additional 50 acres across the way for around 2,000. Now these are pre pandemic prices, okay? Interest rates were fairly low and we were able to afford all this because interest rates were low and because land didn't cost that much. So. We basically got into the farm for a little over $300,000. The extra 50 acres was a little bit too much for me, and we'll talk about that in just a minute because I sold that piece off. I didn't need that piece of land, but what I needed was to keep industrial buildings away, to keep neighborhoods away. I didn't want our beautiful countryside to be turned into a subdivision or a trailer park. Nothing wrong with living in a trailer park. I lived in trailer parks for years, guys. I understand that serves a purpose, absolutely. But I didn't want it in my backyard. So what I did was I bought that 50 acres over there and I cleaned it up and I improved it and made it look really, really nice. I offered it to some of my family members. They declined, then I put it up for sale just before the pandemic. And I ended up making enough money to pay off the rest that I owed, which was super cool. So getting out of debt is something that's super important, guys. So don't bury yourself up and let me tell you, buying the land is the cheap part. Building the property that you want, your dream home or your dream property is the expensive part, the fencing part, the, the pastures, the hay, the animals, the cows, the gardens, everything, super expensive. So you've got to think about that. If you're out there looking for land and you're just scraping pennies up to buy it, you're not ready. So when we bought the farm, this did not look like that, okay? This was not a pasture. This was overgrown in brush and trees and debris. And you can see the trees that are all back in behind me. They're all pine trees and they're all kind of toppling over each other. Some of the hardwoods are taken over, but it was nothing significant. I get a lot of feedback about deforestation. These were fields before. They were ignored and they overgrew. In North Carolina, if you leave something alone, a spot of land alone for longer than, I don't know, two years, the forest is gonna take it back. And that's exactly what happened was the forest took it back. So the first thing we did is we had to kind of devise a plan. You must, must, must get a survey. And you've got to look at the aerials of your property and pick out what you want and how you want it. So I knew I wanted to make this pasture. I knew there was some pasture back here. 
and we started cutting timber. So the way this works with cutting timber, if you buy a five acre plot of land, you probably have no monetary value in your timber, okay? So a lot of people think, well, we could buy this five acres and call a timber company and they'll buy all our timber. It ain't gonna happen, Billy Bob. It ain't gonna happen, okay? It just won't. Your timber on a small track like that, it, it takes millions of dollars worth of equipment to harvest that timber and ship it off. So if you can find a small operator that will haul it out, most of the time, those people are not the most desirable folks that you want around, okay? In other words, the jack leg guy might get you. Okay, so be aware of that. If you're buying land for timber sale that you wanna clear, you need 20, 30, 40 acres, 50, 60. And I'll tell you exactly what we did. We cut 100 acres of timber and it varied from this size, which would be chips, to this size or this size, which would be saw logs. So saw logs meaning to make lumber. We had hardwoods like oak and wild cherry and poplar and we had softwoods like pine, like the pines you see falling all over the place. I called the U.S. Forestry Service here, the closest office here in North Carolina. They came out, they did a survey on the land, they told me what I needed to do, and they advised me to cut it and replant if I wanted to replant or clear. So we cut timber, and after we cut timber, we brought in machines. We hired this work done, and let me tell you, you think you can rent a bulldozer or a loader or an excavator and do it cheaper than you can hire it, and I'm telling you, right now, if you take any message home from this video, you cannot do it cheaper. You can't, your time is valuable. You go to work and you get your earnings and you pay the professional to do it so that there's a professional job when you get done so that the land looks nice, so that they bury whatever stumps or push them off or haul them off the way that's appropriate. You won't save time or money doing it yourself. There will be people that argue in this video. Post that argument down there. Tell me, ah, oh, Darren, me and my wife cleared about 74 acres. No, you're not going to save any money. You're going to spend a lot of time and you're not going to come out with as professional a job as if you hired it done. So we hired it cleared. We started clearing land. We cleared nearly 100 acres. We only replanted about, of the 100 acres we cut, we only replanted about 10 acres. So we cleared about 90 acres. Then we came in and we started mowing and mowing and mowing because we couldn't afford our fences yet. And you've got to think about this, guys. Farm fencing, and we use woven wire here for our farm fencing. We also use steel posts. So we use the steel posts, and I bought them back pre-COVID from Farm Fence Solutions. Our good friends that taught me so much about how to build fences, and you'll get some fence footage right here. We were building all the fences on the farm. We have somewhere in the neighborhood of three and a half miles of fencing. Now lessons learned on building fences. Build those fences off of the forest. Don't build them right to your property line. You need to be able to access the outside perimeter of your fences and all along the farm here, we have access to all the fences from the outside. You need to be able to drive a side-by-side -side or an ATV with a chainsaw around the outside edge and keep those trees trimmed back. Trees are your enemy. They will destroy your fence. When a windstorm hits, the cows will find the first spot that a limb falls down on the fence. So build it once and build it right and build it tight, okay? So we used a woven wire fence, which is a physical barrier. People use barbed wire, people use all sorts of wire. That's a topic for another video and we are gonna take you around and show you multiple types of fences and we're gonna talk about the benefits and the downfalls of each. The downfall of the fence that we have here is it's very expensive. The good part about the fence is if a tree falls on it, it's high tensile woven wire, it falls on it, we simply cut the tree off, pull it back up, tie it to the post. If it bends the post, we bend it back and that's it. It's a lifetime fence here. Those steel posts will outlast me and probably outlast my grandkids if I ever have any kids. <laughs> These are my kids right now. So after we started building fences, I dallied in, uh, or dabbled in cutting hay. So I started cutting hay and the lessons that were learned with cutting hay. So I spent thousands, tens of thousands of dollars on fertilizer and lime and grass seed. And we started seeding all of our pastures that we'd cleared and we got our fences up. We had to get forage established for the cows. And the first thing I thought was, I gotta make some money. I'm gonna cut hay. Well, let me tell you, it's Robin Peter to pay Paul. 
I cut hay and lost my butt. So I had thirty dollars or $40,000 worth of hay cutting equipment, not even counting the tractor. I cut hay the first year and I lost my butt and I learned a lesson. When you take from the land, you must put back. You cannot rob from Peter without paying Paul. You have to put fertilizer back. And I didn't want to do that. I was angry, pretty much angry and or upset and disappointed in the food system in our country. It's such an intensive system. It's such a grain intensive system where these cows only see grass, the grass from this farm and the grass from other local farms because we unroll hay onto the land. We bought the land. It was an overgrown, messy disaster. We got in. We started clearing some stuff. I started with chainsaws and little bitty tractors, trying to do all this on the cheap. DR field and brush mower, trying to do all this on the cheap. Could not do it on the cheap. The best thing I ever did was hire this guy. His name was Frank to come in and start clearing land. So Frank started clearing land for me. What he could do for with two thousand dollars and two days of work, it would have taken me six months to do. So again. Get some equipment in there and get your land right. If you buy a farm that has existing fences or existing pastures, just understand you may have to fertilize one or two years. If you want a farm like this, a regenerative farm, you still may have to fertilize. You may have to lime. You may have to get rid of some noxious weeds. I'm finding that intensive mowing has really, really helped and we have never, ever sprayed an herbicide on this land. This pasture has been fertilized once and that's when I didn't know any better and when we first were trying to get grass established here on the farm. So you may have to do that. It's something that's important to know. After we cut the timber, we started clearing the land. We started planting the grass seed. Then we moved on to building the fences and I started cutting hay and then I started bringing my animals in. So we started out with goats. Goats, not good, not, <laughs> they're always trying to hurt themselves. They were always getting tangled up in the fence. They were always getting their heads stuck in something. They were always having a hay bale fall on them. They would get sick, they would die. They were a big struggle. And the first thing that most people do is goats, okay? For the first animal that most people get are goats and goats, are really hard to keep alive and that's something that's really important and that's why we went with a hardier animal like these Angus cattle right here. Now I've learned something about cattle. I don't want great big monstrous cows. I'm not taking my cows to the cattle barn to sell them at the market. I'm selling beef right off the farm. That is another really important lesson guys. So we started out with two or three cows. We unloaded those guys off the trailer. Then we bought four or five more. Then we bought an, a whole farm, uh, the entire farm. We bought 26 cows. So now we're up to 49 cows and we'll butcher somewhere in the neighborhood of four to eight cows per year and sell that beef. That is value. That is how you earn money on a small farm. You can't earn money with 50 cows, earn a profit with 50 cows on a small farm like this, just going to the wholesale barn and wholesaling your animals. So that's something that's super important for you guys to know. So clearing land, cut timber, cleared land, planted pastures, started mowing hay, learned a lesson, shouldn't have mowed hay. Next thing, got my livestock, didn't have a water system in place. Now last weekend we did a video all about the water system and there'll be a link right up here and a link at the end of the video to the water system build. That's super important. Everything that goes on on any farm that has livestock or crops revolves around water, water, water. We have six creeks on the property and the cows don't have access to the creeks. There's one creek that they do have access to, but I'm going to fence it off pretty soon too. We don't want our animals, our livestock pooping in the creek, okay? We want to keep our nature and our livestock in harmony with one another. And I'll tell you this, once we brought the livestock onto the farm, I have seen a tenfold increase in wildlife from foxes to wild birds, to doves, to starlings, to bobcats, to coyotes, which sometimes they're animals that we don't like, possums, raccoons, uh, in the ponds, the ponds are healthier. Everything is healthier because each species almost supports another species. So every species you can bring to your farm or to your land will help support eight more species. It's pretty amazing. 
So moving right along, we bought more cows, bought more cows, built the water system. So last summer, I started building the water system. You're gonna get some cool footage of this. This was an expensive endeavor. So we drilled a well, an agricultural well, just for the cows, and it was a solar well from Lorentz Solar. I'll post a link down the video description for you guys. I drilled a well with solar panels, and that well is just right over here, okay? And we started pumping water. I had to run poly pipe all over the entire farm. There is government grant money out there for you to do this on your property. We applied for the grant, did not get the grant because we're doing everything right. <laughs> so we applied for the grant, we didn't get the grant and I had to build it. I had to have a water system in place. The water is integral. These cows rotate all around these pastures, around the water tank. So water, water, water. You really have to think about that kind of thing, guys. So we got in and we built our water system. We started increasing our numbers with our cattle and that's how we built the farm. I did what everyone else was doing. I took my big old black Angus cows and I took them to the sale barn and I sold them for wholesale when I had a premium product that ate only grass and didn't get medications. We don't treat the well, we treat the sick here. We don't give steroids, we don't give medicines. Unless an animal is sick, we don't have to deworm. We treat these animals like they should be treated. They rotate out on pasture. They're always moving on pasture, so they never really have to graze next to their manure. And what would happen if you ate in the bathroom all the time? You'd get sick too. These cows aren't sick. That is the precipice for this farm. That is what I did. That is how I built it. And that's eight years <laughs> in 20 minutes, guys. I hope if you have any questions, you'll post them down there. Please watch that water system video. And next weekend or the weekend after, we're going to do a video all about fencing. We're going to show you the different types of fencing we have here on our farm. We're going to visit other farms and we're going to talk about the benefits and the downfalls of barbed wire, smooth wire, high tensile, high tensile woven wire, steel post, wood post, combination, all sorts of fun stuff. Guys, we'll see you in the next video here on the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. Please jump in, subscribe. I'd love to have you back here on our first generation farm. If you're interested in beef, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Stony Ridge Farmer and you can find our beef. We have very limited supply and we're just now starting to ship. Thank you guys. Take care. Have a great day. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be Stony Ridge. Come on, girls! Woo! Whoa, that thing shocked the shit out of me. Ow! Good Lord, had a heart attack. If you got that on camera. <sighs> Holy cow, man. That like restarted my heart. Hopefully I'm not in AFib or something. Oh my God, I got the crap shocked out of me. Hey, what y'all looking at? Uh, water. <laughs> water. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. Going and get now. Go on now, go on and get, go on and get. Woo!